Hi, my name is Heinrich and today I'm going to show you how to perform trigonometric calculations without using a calculator. Now the first thing you think of when you hear without the use of a calculator is your special angles. So your special angles are angles that are you are assumed to know. So if you have a question like give the sine of 30 without the use of a calculator, you can just write down the answer because it is assumed knowledge that you know the answer to that angle. Right, so our special angles are 0, 30, 45, 60 and 90. You'll notice these are only angles in the first quadrant, so if you don't have an angle in the first quadrant, just change it into an angle in the first quadrant using reduction formulae or the co-functions. There are two types of questions that they ask with this no calculator section. The first one is when you are given an unknown angle like theta and you're said it's equal to a ratio like 4 over 5. When you have this, draw a triangle in order to solve the question. The second type is when you have a known angle like 22 and that is equal to an unknown like P or Q or P over Q or anything like that. Now your strategy here is to draw a triangle, but you can also use reduction formulae or identities in order to try and solve these problems. So let's see, drawing a triangle. Your first step is to identify which quadrant you are in. If you don't identify the correct quadrant, you aren't going to have the right positives or negatives. Then you are going to use Pythagoras' theorem in order to solve for the missing side. And after that, you're going to use SOKATOA in order to simply read the answer off your triangle. So let's see, we're given sine theta is equal to negative 4 over 5, and theta is an element of 90 and 270. So sine theta equals a negative number, so that is in quadrant 3 or quadrant 4. And theta is an element of 90 or 270, so that is in quadrant 2 or in quadrant 3. So wherever you get two ticks, you know that is the quadrant that you're in, so we are in quadrant 3. So we draw our Cartesian plane, and then we draw our triangle, a right angle triangle, on the Cartesian plane. Then we populate it with the information that we already have. So we were given the angle theta, negative 4 is the opposite side, and the hypotenuse is 5. Then we use Pythagoras in order to find our missing side and we find the adjacent side is equal to negative 3. Now we simply read our answers off the triangle. So cos of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse is equal to negative 3 over 5. Tan of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent is equal to negative 4 over negative 3. And then this more complicated looking one, 2 cos theta sine theta, we already know what cos theta is and we already know what sine theta is. So we can simply substitute in for those two numbers and once we simplify that we get 24 over 25. Right, let's keep going. So our second type of problem, we have sine of 22 is equal to P. So the things that we look for is to answer questions for sine 22, cos 22 and tan 22, we have to draw a triangle. And again, we'll be able to read lots of our answers off the triangle that we drew. Then we can try to use double angle formulae. So wherever you see 44 or something like 90 minus 44, you know, just play around. Wherever double your angle comes into it, you're going to use double angle formulae. Then we can use compound angle formulae, and this is usually in the form we have a special angle, so 30, 45, or 60, plus your angle, which is 22 here, or minus your angle, which is 22. So it could be a number like 52, which is 30 plus 22, or a number like 8, which is 30 minus 22. Again, play around with it, play with your special angles and the angle that was given to you. Right, so let's try to solve some of these problems. So again, the first thing we do is we're going to draw a triangle. And our triangle is in quadrant 1 because 22 is an angle that is in quadrant 1. Then we populate it with the information that we have. So 22 is the angle that was given to us. We can find the other angle, 
68 because we know the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees and we can put in the sides at least we can put in the opposite side because that's p and we can put in the hypotenuse because we know that sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse and p can be written as p over 1. Right, let's keep going. So we've got sine of 202. Now again, we're comfortable working with angles that is in the first quadrant between 0 and 90. So let's make it a first quadrant angle. We can split that into sine of 180 plus 22. We can change that into negative sine of 22 because sine is negative in the third quadrant and positive in the first quadrant. So we have to put a negative sign in front of sine in order to match them up. And then we know that sine 22 is equal to p, so we can just substitute in for p. Stay with me. So cos of 22, we can read off our triangle. So we found our adjacent side by using Pythagoras. So we know cos of 22 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and that is simply equal to root, one minus, root of 1 minus p squared all over 1. Easy, wasn't it? Then we've got something like sine of 44, and again, that is now a double angle formulae type question because it's 2 times 22. So we can split that using our double angle formulae, and that becomes 2 of sine 22 times cos 22. And lucky for us, we know sine of 22 is equal to p, and we know cos of 22 is equal to root 1 minus p squared. So we can simply substitute in for those two uh, functions. Right, then we've got cos of 68. Now again, lucky for us, we've got a 68 degree angle in our triangle. So this one, we can just read the solution off our triangle again. Right, so cos is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? And again, our angle is now that 68 degree angle, not our 22 degree angle. So our adjacent side, right, is now the P, and the hypotenuse is still the 1. So cos of 68 is simply equal to p over 1. Really easy, isn't it? Let's move on. Now we've got sine of 52. And this is usually the one that's a little bit more tricky because you have to play around again with your special angles and the angle you've been given. So here we can see sine of 52 is simply equal to sine of 30 plus 22. We can use our double our compound angle formally to change that into sine of 30 times cos of 22 plus cos of 30 times sine of 22. Now sine of 30 and cos of 30 are functions that include special angles, so we can put those into our triangle, uh, into our calculator, and just use that answer in our, our next answer. And then cos of 22 we've already solved for, so we can just substitute in using uh, what we solved for earlier, and sine of 22 we were given is equal to p at the start, so we can substitute in using that as well. Right, so today I showed you just how easy it is to answer trigonometric questions without the use of a calculator.